Welcome to the F word. Tonight, the F stands for Fanny. For the last nine weeks, I've searched the country to find the next Fanny Craddock. Tonight, I fill the restaurant with the 50 finalists. <laughs> On the menu, pea, asparagus, pancetta, and goat's cheese for tartar. Honey roast up with green beans and baked Alaska. Plus, I go hunting for Britain's ugliest fish. Shit. All right, the size of it. God, they're so strong. Cat Dealey pops her cork. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Four ex-army boys go into battle to win the right to cook at my Mayfair restaurant, Claridge's. Yes, yes, sir! Celebrate tonight, yes? Let's go on with the starter. <laughs> Fuck me, my ears. Gentlemen, good evening. Four ex army officers. You're all used to pressure. You've served in Iraq. Yeah. Clearly, you're all very used to giving out orders. Yeah, tonight there's only going to be one person giving out orders, that's <laughs> me. Yes? You've got four ladies, Lancashire Lassie, standing in between you and the final at Claridge's. Yeah, you should really do better than that. Yes? Yeah? yeah. Uh, Ed, what's on the menu? What's on the menu? We've got uh, summer frittata, Gordon. Good. We've got roast duck breast with uh, fine green beans and uh -huh. slurry potatoes. And we've got uh, baked Alaska. Wonderful. Thanks. Um, now, perfect fucking frittata. I'm going to do one with you now. Get the pan hot. Bacon in first, yeah? What's next? Onions. Onions. Onions, Onions. Onions. that's right. Asparagus in, yeah? Peas in. Egg bits at the bottom. The secret is to have it a little bit runny in the centre, but not liquid, yes? Yeah. Ghost cheese over. Asparagus yeah. tips. Under the grill. Bang. In. The idea of that is to melt all that ghost cheese. Look, and it's a really nice sort of creamy, textured frittata. Yeah? Oh, okay. First table's on. OK, so Chris and Charlie, yes, on order four covers, table five. Four pea asparagus, pancetta frittata. Four duck, four baked Alaska. Yes, yes sir! Excellent, well done. Tonight's cool. brigade is Ed, Charlie, Adam and Chris, the army boys. Let's go, guys, please. We've known each other for about five years. We've all served in various parts of the world. We've been in some pretty tough times together. Very passionate about eating food. I really like my food. Tuna. Steak. Monkfish. Cut yourself yet? I'm, no, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> I think we've got a really good chance of uh, beating the uh, Lancashire Lasses. We will beat the competition. I think we can definitely beat them. If we don't, then we might as well go into hiding. Um, we're going to win it, um, and we're going to go to Claridge's. I know they're fussy out there, so be careful, okay. yes? Make sure you get some really nice colour on those lines. Yes, yes. I think that's done. Let's get this right the really the plate. Good at the top. Okay. More salad, please. Gently, just a little bit over there. They're very nice. Good. Chris. Okay. Now, would you pay for that? I would certainly pay yeah. for that. Yeah, good. Yeah. They're very nice. Table five, go, please. Well done. <laughs> I saw bits of black in there. Now, what is all that in there? We need to make more. Here, apple four. Do you want four more, Gordon? No, you're, you're bright guys. Look, you know, then we're not going to serve that. Sorry. Okay. We can't hide it under the old. Under the no, lettuce. we can't no, hide. Fuck all. No. Come on. Okay. All the same size. Start totally again. Good. Bullshit. It's not just the meat for my lambs that I'm going to be using in the restaurant. Hey. It's hard to believe they're going in a week. I've been looking after my sheep for three months since they were just six weeks old. It's amazing how friendly they've become, isn't it? Yeah. Hey. When we first got them, they were like running away. And I know. On the fence. I now have to turn my thoughts to why I kept the lambs in the first place, to serve them in my restaurant. And today we're going to weigh them, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we've got sufficient meat on there. Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Should we weigh Daddy? Huh? Yeah, no. Yeah, no Daddy. chance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, listen seriously. If you want any pocket money, open the bloody door, hey, look. guys. <laughs> Matilda! Jack! <laughs> come on, buddy. You don't do that to your best mate. Jack! Jack! I'll be serving my lambs to 50 paying diners. They've been bulking up on grass and hard feed. If they weigh anything above 30 kilos, it means it's all been worth it. Daddy, that's Gavin! Yeah, I know I'm holding Gavin. I've just got my knees caked in shit. 
There you go. OK, what does Gavin weigh? 35 kilos. That's great. Oh, yeah, Gavin's a cross. Welsh, 50% and 50% Charolais, so the 100% Charolais are always going to be a lot bulkier. But that's okay. a great weight for Gavin. Yes, fantastic. That, that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> right, one more task, yes? You see all the poo-poo everywhere. Oh. I need a bucket full of poo. Guess what? We're going to make paper. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> that's In a big one, yeah. <laughs> Is it 100% poo? Oh. Yeah. Smell? Yeah. <laughs> right, we're going to meet a poo man. Oh, can I say hello, please? Please, please, please? I don't want to waste anything. So we're going to make quality paper out of my lamb's poo. Then I'll print the restaurant menus on it the night my lambs are dished up. What's the first stage? Well, the first thing we've got to do, obviously, is sterilise this. The last thing we want to be doing is handling something that might have any uh, yeah. pathogens in it. No germs. <laughs> we need to extract the fibres from the poo to make the paper. Right, on she goes. Sterilise. I've never, ever cooked poo before. Are you OK with that in the washing machine? Well, it's been late to ask you if I'm OK. No, 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 but I mean, just make sure my socks aren't in there. Wash. OK, here we go. Examine. Smell? <laughs> <laughs> Blitz. Pour. Spread. Lift. Rest. Throw. Payback. <laughs> Tony! Stop! Yeah. We're making paper. OK, concentrate. Peel. Oh, lovely. Mangle. Come on, Lily Pie. Come on, Lily. Sheep poo paper. Done. Nice. Now that's good enough for the menus at Clarity's, isn't it? It was very fresh, it was very light, the vegetables were perfectly cooked. Above all, it was je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I'm speaking French. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> right, results. That's the target to beat, yes? Yep. OK, the number of fannies that are prepared to pay for the starters. 33 out of 50. Ouch. That is exactly the same number as the Lancashire Lasses. So you're on target. Yeah. You've yeah. been under pressure before. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're under yeah. even more pressure. Yeah, <laughs> get it right for the duck. Yeah? OK, let's go. Main course. Next on the menu, I give Cat Delia a mouthful. But look, you put weight on. But I mean, I'm not calling you a fat man. Has your wife taught you nothing? And how to look good naked. Got one, gives me some fashion advice. What is going on with those fucking cardigans, Gordy? <laughs> uh, you don't like my cardigans? They're bonfire food. <laughs> Welcome back to the F Word. Time for the main course. <laughs> Duck. Normally burnt to a cinder or stuffed inside a pancake roll. What a waste. It's nice and light and gamey. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> Score. Season. Five spice. Quite generous with the five spice. This makes the duck really aromatic. Dry pan. Fat side down, push it down in the pan. As that fat starts releasing itself from the duck breast, get a pan. Now save that fat. That's duck fat. Delicious for sauteed potatoes. Honey. Soy sauce. For me, the most important thing now is the duck stays nice and pink. Absolutely stunning. Green beans. Perfect accompaniment with duck. Into boiling water, literally one and a half minutes. Hazelnuts. These are dried, roasted hazelnuts. More intense flavour. Season. Crush. Beans. Nice and crunchy. When the beans are warm, they take on the vinaigrette. Olive oil. Hazelnut oil. Sherry vinegar. Delicious. Slice. Lovely. Honey roast up with hazelnut green bean salad. Done. Fucking delicious. Nice and hot, yes? It's so easy. There's three things on here. Duck, beans, potatoes. Right. A couple of spoonfuls, Adam. Fine. That's it. Okay. Garlic okay. in there. Cook with noise, yes? Yeah, yeah, how many have you got there, Ed? Four. 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 Good. That's yeah. what I asked for. Good. Beans, please. 
Yeah, the beans. Four, uh, table eight, please, yes? Beans are there. Beans, potatoes. Beans or potatoes, one of them. They're not cooked. They're not rotten. No, taste them then, come on. Taste them. Don't turn them away, just put them back in the water very, very quickly. Adam, there's crunchy and there's raw. Yeah, okay. Oh, stop skin now. Handful of beans on there. Okay, good. Right, duck on. Chris, come here. Are you happy with them? Yeah, I'm, they're, 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 some of the cuts are a bit dodged, but... Yeah, you know, I'll show you again when to slice it. Okay, we use a carving knife, yeah? Yeah, that knife that... just wasn't sharp enough. Okay, go, okay. please. Table five, yes? Okay. Right, Adam, I want the fucking beans, please, yes? Yes, sir. They're still not cooked. Come on, back in. You've got no fucking water in there. Is that yeah, that's yeah, that huh? yeah, yeah. Always keep that pan of water boiling out in there, yes? Yes, sir. Fucking hell, surely you can cook a bean, my man. Fucking hell. Right, let's go. Hey, it'd be really nice if you could serve your food, okay. yes? Yep. Right, I'm standing there pissing your fucking knickers. Let's go. Service, please. Sorry to keep you waiting. Sorry to cook beans okay. four fucking really times. Fun. Nothing to laugh about. Yes? Table eight, let's go. Conga eel. They're sustainable and delicious, but sadly, no one wants to eat them because they're so fucking ugly. Conger eels are monstrous creatures. They can grow up to 10 foot long and can weigh up to 250 pounds. Thousands of them live in the sea around Britain, and it's a waste not to eat them. I've come to Exmouth to meet Dave Curley, who's one of the few people I could find who fishes for congers, and he sells it in his fish and chip shack. Yeah, yeah. When was the last time you got your hair cut? Oh, <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> Right. Huh? So like Duran Duran. Huh? Yeah. These things are huge, aren't they? I mean, you they know, can be. Completely yeah. different yeah. to a freshwater eel. Related to the same family, but they're, I mean, they're humongous, yeah? Yeah. I've so, seen £100. Pound. £100? Pound. I've yeah. seen it, yeah. Conger eels often live inside wrecks, so we're heading out to sea to fish over one. The yeah. fascinating thing about conger eels. Yeah. yeah, they look fucking ugly. They are ugly looking, but you cut through that flesh and it's white gold. It is just, Beautiful. it is lovely, and it just hasn't quite got the flavour of cod. But you're going to prove me wrong with that today. Yeah. We'll be catching the congas with rods, which is going to be a real challenge as they're very difficult to fish. So it's going to be a slow tug, 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 and then bang, bang, yeah. and when you know it's on, it's on. When they're on, they're, they're ferocious, aren't they? Ah, oh, it's non-stop. It yeah. is actually physically very yeah. tiring to get yeah. one up from the surface. Congas are tricky to catch because they live within the wreck. They come out to take the bait and then nip back into hiding. You got something on? Yeah. Oh, he's got something on there. Damn. Fucker's gone. Just come off there. Damn. I load up my hook with more bait and try again. Oh, well done. Uh, they're biting. Yeah. This is definitely a conger on here, Gordon. Is it? Oh, he's gone. Oh, shit! <laughs> no! <laughs> Why are they coming off so fucking frequently? It's frustrating but exciting at the same time. He's on. Jesus Christ, they're so strong. Oh, there he is. Oh. Fantastic. Shit. What size is that? That's casserole size, I call it. Bloody hell. That's not bad, is it? Not bad at huh? all, no. God, they're so strong. Fuck. We'll uh, go absolutely... Right fantastic. now? Yeah, I think if you just jump them straight across there... These buggers can really bite, so the quickest and most humane way to kill them is to sever their spinal cord. That's it. That's it. Jesus Christ. You got him. <laughs> I think you got him. <laughs> Bouillabaisse is one of my favourite French fish dishes, but I want to create a British version using conga to show Dave and his customers that this eel can be even more delicious. So we're going to season it first, OK, and start the process of a conga eel bouillabaisse, yeah? Okay. Very similar to a classic French bouillabaisse, but no grey mullet, no monkfish, no prawns, no lobster, just, right, just, just, just conga. pure conga. Olive oil. Then add a little black pepper, salt and saffron. Oil in, skin side down, into the pan. Okay. And this one... We're going to start getting the vegetables going. Nice hot pan. Add some olive oil, fennel, carrots, celery and star anise. Crush a whole garlic, add a handful of shallots and lastly, cayenne pepper. That puts a little bit of heat inside the soup. 
and really help to season. Give that a little stir for me, please. So we can take that out and we've got a colour there. That's all we wanted on there. Fish in, but it smells amazing. Lovely. Just lays the pan with a little bit of perno. Then sit down, set fast in the shack. <laughs> Woo, shit. Burn off the alcohol. And uh, mix in the vegetables. Yeah, and the fish okay. evenly. Add a splash of wine, fish stock, potatoes, fresh tomatoes, basil, and parsley to finish the dish. Cook it out for 20 minutes, and then we're going to blend it. Oh, that's all right. Okay. okay, buddy. Shall we go? Yes. Look at them all. Fish and chips is off the menu. Yes. Can we try? Yeah, please. Conger eel. That's good. It's Very gorgeous. good. It tastes like green. It tastes like It does taste like fish. Absolutely. I'm amazed. Like <laughs> we love conga. It's so frustrating that we do not eat enough conga eel, so please start buying it, because in there, they clearly loved it. It may be ugly, but it's fucking delicious. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kat, how are you, darling? I'm good. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice you to see you. To you see you nice. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Um, enjoying dinner? I am, you know, so far, yeah. Yes. It's all good. Very um, good. Uh, how long have you been in LA? Uh, I've been out there for just under a year, so mm -hmm. I've um, bought a house out there. Food-wise, uh, what's yeah. it like out there? What are, you, uh, what are you eating on? You know what? I pretty much eat anything. Mm -hmm. and I you look well. You, look like you put weight on since the last time I, I saw you. Uh, maybe I have. In a nice way. No, not in a... Has your uh, wife taught you nothing? No, 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 but I mean, I'm not calling you a fat really. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> you look great with a little bit of weight on. It's I fantastic. Do, I, you know what? I'm very lucky that I yeah. kind of don't have to worry about it too much. Well, they are over. obsessed with food out there. Yeah. yeah. But no one seems to drink. Which is terrible. Which I know. Is, I, order a glass of, I order a glass of wine at lunch and it's like, check out the alcohol. I know, check out the Brit in the corner. <laughs> that's, a, that's a second sip of wine. But you still drink, don't you? Yeah, of yes. course. Favourite drink? Ooh, well, uh, for me, it's always champagne. Lovely. Well, Girl's because, best friend. Well, no, it's just, for me, there's happiness in every bubble. You know, Does it's it one miss? of the... Well, it's there's one a lot of those... bubbles in a glass of champagne. Exactly. As a country now, we're the second largest drinkers of champagne outside France. You are a font of information. I don't know, it's, just, it's all up there now. <laughs> yeah. uh, JB. Yeah. Right, little challenge now, yes? Um, I've got a series of champagnes, and I want you to taste them all and see if you can spot the difference between them. This is not a, a, a test. This is a really nice way of sort of, you know, understanding champagne better. Have a little taste. Second one. I, I, I prefer that one because it's actually a bit more kind of bubbly and sparkly. Uh -huh. Absolutely spot on, because that is the expensive one, Tazinger, the one you liked, and that's a cheap, sparkling wine, yeah, at 4 .99. You spotted it straight away, you know. Uh, Did I? Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, the most exciting thing about champagne is got those tiny bubbles that rise from the base of the glass all the way up constantly. And sparkling wine has a lot bigger bubbles, and they disperse quicker. Literally, yeah. yeah. Well done. Do you think? Fantastic. So this is a vintage champagne and a non-vintage champagne. Oh, so, God. OK. So you can tell the difference. A little bit more difficult and, yeah. obviously, in terms of age, um, a completely different set of grapes. Um, <clears> have a look <throat> at that one. Mm. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> that one. Uh-huh. OK. <laughs> well done. <laughs> You were right. They're both lovely. Uh, absolutely. They're both lovely. Vintage and non-vintage. Now, the big difference between vintage and non-vintage champagne is that vintage champagne is a lot stronger and richer in flavour. Complexity comes with age. Right, number three. It's quite interesting, this one. Okay. Yes. Now, they're both champagne. Right. One's a cheap brand and one's an expensive brand. Right. It's really important not just to focus on label and buy the label. What do you think? I definitely prefer that one. Uh, why do you prefer this one? Because it's lighter and... Are you going to call me cheap now? <laughs> so, you preferred the cheap one. I did prefer the cheap one. So do I. The own brands produced by the supermarkets often come out on top in competitive wine tastings. Mm. It's nice. Now, the secret of opening champagne is making sure it's open just with a little sort of wisp at the end. OK. Not a no, big, no, 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 I like the pop. No, it's the thing that signifies so, oh, woohoo! And, <laughs> <laughs> and just a small twist. Nice, slowly, and then just come to the end and just tilt the cork. There. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to show you um, a really exciting way of opening a bottle of champagne, yes? Okay, yes, yes, 
Yes. Right. Yes. This is Julian Wilde. I'm Kat. Nice to meet you. Hello, now, Kat. You this doing? man is an expert, a, a, an amazing expert in um, opening wines a completely different way, yes? Indeed, indeed. It's exciting. So they started opening champagne like this in this the, the, the Napoleonic war. Wars. Amazing. A great time, yes. The cavalry, the cavalry was sort of waiting to go into battle. Oh. Take a bottle out of the saddlebag and chop away. If the Why French not? soldiers can do it, I'm sure we can here in the F word. Right, ready? Lay um, the sabre on there. The sabre. Never take it off the glass. Right. Slide it straight up and away it flies. Slowly or fast? Quickly like that. Quickly like that. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Off again. Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> Yeah. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. I think you have to have a go, Kat. There we go. <laughs> Sunday lunch will never be the same. Here we go. Right. Okay. Right, yes. Oh. So you lay the Jesus. sword flat on there, mm -hmm. and away you, huh? just, you just go up there with one, two, three, and bang, away you go. Am I doing it completely on my own? Just like that. Okay, Why not? Really? Off you go. One, two, three. Nice. Right yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I got well, so much fun. Well done, well done, well done. Oh, there's more, there's more, there's more, there's Do more. more. It's and like Jim or Fix. There you are, there's your cork. And we have to say to you, <laughs> oh, in the go. name of Noah, father of the vine, of St. Vincent, <laughs> the patron saint of Vignerons, I hereby declare that you are a sabra <laughs> of the Confrey du Sabrador. Fantastic. Uh, I, thank you so much. What are you going down at one knee for? Oh, you have to. <laughs> thank you so much. Well done, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Nice thank to see you. Thank you. Going back to the kitchen. See you in a minute. Take care, my darling. Bye. Good to see you. Bye. Uh, by the way, do you Fantastic. want your weapon back? <laughs> <laughs> no? I'm left here on my own with bottles of champagne and a sword. The meat was delicious, really well cooked. Um, quite liking the little hazelnuts on the beans. It was a bit of an interesting touch. I would say the duck was extremely well cooked in the sense that it's nice and tender, still holding itself together, and it tastes great. Right, guys, results of the main courses. OK, good. Right, Chris, how do you think you did? Well, I think we did well, actually. Yeah. I think we had a few hiccups. But... Yeah. Slow happen. but good. Yeah. Yeah? OK, yeah. JB, results. 26 out of 50. Ah. <laughs> Guys. Alas. Disappointing. That's not so good. Yeah. Feedback from the customers, what do they say? Yeah, so a bit slow. And the green bean is a bit oily. That and was a vinaigrette. Long. It wasn't oily yeah. and greasy. It was mm. like a really nice hazelnut vinaigrette. It's women hard to please. Tough customers out there tonight. You're more than capable of getting 50 out of 50 for the dessert, yeah? Don't be down and out. Come back. Next on the menu, got one lays on a plate for me in the recipe challenge. Are you flirting with me? Absolutely. <laughs> fucking lootly. I cook up the ultimate dinner party in under 30 minutes. Where's that fucking gatto? In the bin. In the bin. It's <laughs> and finally, after wading through hundreds of audition tapes, I've invited 50 female cooks to the restaurant, tasted their dishes, and soon I'll be choosing my favourites. Three of you are going to show me who really is the best of the best? Welcome back to The F Word. Time to find out who's got amazing taste and a sense of style in the kitchen and who has got wan. Ready? <laughs> you, you bet your ass I'm ready. No, no, oh, dear. So, my cook-off with Gordon, I am doing a family recipe, which is a prawn and Chinese mushroom wonton in a soup noodle. And it's all about the prep of Chinese food. It's not about the cooking time. So Gok's doing a wonton soup, and I'm doing something very similar, but I'm gonna do a bit of a sort of wonton soup, but mixed with a little bit of sort of hot and sour. And then make some nice wontons, but with some fresh scallops in there, so we can just sort of glamorize it a little bit. Uh, can I just say, you've got bloody good knife skills there. You yeah. spend a lot of time in the kitchen, yes? Do you know what, my Look dad has been in catering all of his life, and he's actually got a fish and chip shop in Leicester now. But oh, really? I was brought up in the kitchens, and I was brought up in the restaurant, and from a very early age, yeah. Dad was teaching us, you know, how to cook and how to look after the restaurant. So catering's yeah. a massive part of my life, really, I have to say. That's fantastic. You have a fascinating background with food because when you were younger, you used to be a little bit porky. <laughs> which I find thanks hard to believe. That. No, but no, no, hold on. But yeah, thanks listen, for that. I, I was a chunky monkey <laughs> once. I got up to just under 18 stone. Right, OK. <clears throat> six years ago, just constantly yeah. eating, not looking after myself. And yeah. yeah, I find it hard to believe because you're, you know, you look good. All my family are big still. And, really? you know, and I was and I, I was 21 stone at my biggest weight. And I was no. a big, yeah, I was a big guy. You know, I never had a really bad relationship with food. No. It's just that we were surrounded by it. And the Chinese yeah. culture is anything you do, whether it's a celebration, a commiseration, doesn't matter what you're doing. Eat. You eat alongside it. So, that, I mean, that was, that was it, really. I'm going to make the stop first. Uh -huh. These are uh, prawn heads. We're sweating off with some garlic, some chilli, ginger, lemongrass. Once I've made the stock, I'm going to put the prawns back inside and poach the prawns inside the stock. Finish with the coriander. Noodles, spring onions, and some little beautiful bok choy. Got 
And what's right. in the pot now? I'm going to make a stock out of the prawn heads and the tails. Uh -huh. Because that's what's going to make most of the soup. Watching you work in a kitchen is almost like watching a chef, you know that? Huh? Oh, really? Yeah, but, it's, you know... Oh, I like that. You're I attentive. Like that. You're taking the shit out of the Oh, uh, my God. Do you know what? I was just thinking when you were talking then, this is the rankest job. I would much rather be putting naked women on buildings than doing this, I'm telling you. Go. You do have the most amazing job. Do you I? are the luckiest man <laughs> in the world. I love my job. I love clothes. I love the idea of image. You yeah. know, and it's about making yeah. people feel good, sure. not changing them Absolutely. whatsoever. Not rocket science, really, yeah. is it? It must be a huge turn on. Well, do you know what? Come... Not really my bag, I have to be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have you ever been sort of tempted to sort of change direction? No, do you know what? I, I love penises. I mean, I can't... I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you now. I do. You know, I'm, I am gay. I'm very, very happy about it. I'm out to my family, which is, you know, the biggest part of my life, yeah. more than anything else. You know, me liking guys has got absolutely nothing nothing to do with my yep. job whatsoever, you know. Do you know? think it's... they feel safer because...? Well, of course they do, because I'm not trying to hump them and I'm, there's no, you know, there's no competition with them at all. It's, yep. you know, we do, we do our yep. job and, 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 that's, yep. and that's pretty much it, isn't it? OK, I've got some ginger in there, a little bit of garlic, fresh scallop, coriander and a little bit of lime juice. I'm just going to bind that together, lightly season it and put it in between the wontons and then poach them off. So, Thank what you, I've got so far then, a little bit behind, but it's fine, I'm still going to win. I have the uh, filling for my wontons, which is basically the mashed up prawns, bamboo shoots, water chestnuts, and the Chinese mushrooms, which is the very, very good quality Chinese mushrooms. And do you know what? I have to say, you are one of the gentlest, nicest men you, I've God, ever stop. met in my entire life. That's you really kind. are. Thank you. Are you flirting with me? Absolutely. <laughs> fucking lootly. I hear that you've got a little fetish, haven't you? Uh, yeah, hello? What is going on with those fucking cardigans, Gordon? <laughs> they are absolutely heinous. Can I just say, you're swearing more than me. Uh, oh, you don't I know do. my cardigans. Terrible. I, I swear Two. to God. They're designer. Look, I don't care. I don't care. Honestly, they're not. They're bonfire food. I'll dump the cardigans, OK? You know, image and clothing, it's got to yes. be representative of who you are as a person, right? Absolutely. And the character that you give off with your clothing, yep. um, to me, it's a bit slowny. A bit slowny, I yeah. grew up on a council estate, yeah. God. Yeah, no, so, so did I. So did I. I. But I've I, got a restaurant in Sloan Square, yeah. but I'm not slowny, trust but, me. But, no, but the thing is, you give off that impression. That's what it really? looks like from a, yeah, from a non -locker. And Do you know what? You'd have a lot more knickers in the post. If so I sorted out your wardrobe. You're just trying to distract me now so you can win, you know that? <laughs> without blaming your dad in case you lose. What are you wearing now? Let me see, let me see. Oh, no, I've just got uh, chest trousers on. Chef uh, exactly. Pants. See, how much money have you got on you wearing chest trousers? Because so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a chef. <laughs> so, just to make sure we maximise the flavour in this right. stock with these um, heads of the prawns, I'm going to crush them now, because inside that head is where all the flavour is. Do you know about noodles? Uh, I love noodles. These are just egg wonton noodles, but nice. the consistency uh -huh. is just absolutely amazing. Oh, this is really hard, talking and cooking at the same time. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I've got a migraine. Um, right, they've both got to simmer now for, what, 10, 15 minutes? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we come back, and then you lose. What fucking ever. <laughs> now it's time for dessert. Baked Alaska, absolute classic. Everybody's heard of it, but no-one knows exactly what's inside. Basically, layers of sponge, ice cream, and then wrapped in meringue. But a special meringue, Italian meringue. Sugar water. Bring that up to the boil and cook it out for three minutes. Egg whites. Lemon. That strengthens the egg white. For the sugar. Half of the sugar in. Pause for ten seconds. And the other half in. Classic Italian meringue. Look, beautiful. Ginger sponge. Lovely. Cut. Raspberries. Raspberry liqueur. Be quite generous with that. Ice cream. And then your second sponge. Push that down. Now, meringue into the bag. Pipe. Straight into the freezer. Ten minutes to get nice and solid. Cognac. Flambe in front of your very own eyes. Baked Alaska. Done. Baked Alaska. In the dining room, yeah? yeah. Come back with 50 out of 50. Let's go. Okay. Yes? Let's go. Up. Right, guys, let's go. Up. Here we go. We've got these two coming up first. Well, I'm pretty excited too. I like it. I'm nice. coming. Thank you very much. Guys, hope you enjoy it. Sorry you didn't get Chris, guys, but I will send them over. I hope you're not wearing too much hairspray. 
Do you see the flames? Oh my god. It's a bit hard on the light, but they're there, I promise. That's where we was. There we go. We got it going here. Thank you, girls. <laughs> Perfect. However fast your life is, there's always time for good homemade food. Dinner parties can be hell. The pressure to perform well in the kitchen means menus are often safe or stuck in a time warp. I tend to cook um, a three-course meal. Um, starts off with prawn cocktail, spaghetti bolognese, and then we tend to have a frozen dessert, chocolate gâteau. To cook a nice meal and be adventurous, you need to have time to be able to do that, and at the moment, I just don't have the time to do that. Carol's been cooking like this for 13 years. I'm here to show her a dinner party menu that can be done in under 30 minutes. Dinner parties. A fucking chef's nightmare. That looks like cat food in there. What is that? No, this is spaghetti bolognese. Run me through the spag bowl. Spag bowl. Pasta. Yep. Spaghetti. Mince. Mm -hmm. Tomato. Run me through your bolognese sauce. That is my bolognese sauce. The, what do you mean, that's the, it? The tin, the jar, sauce. Onions, vegetables, garlic. No onions, vegetables, garlic. No, straight onto the spaghetti. 13 no. years, Carol. Three months, fine, but 13 years cooking the same old shit. That. Let's start off with that in there. Let's go in there. Yeah. We're going to do three dishes. Salmon, chicken and a cheesecake. They can be done easily whilst you get ready and lay the table at the same time. Right, first of all, we're going to do the salmon. It's on my menu at the restaurant. Perfect for summer. Very, very light. And it's a ladies' dish. So we'll get the marinade done first. Uh, spring onions. While you're doing that, I'll chop the chilli. And the nice thing about this, it can vary. You know that. You can put chopped ginger in there. As you get a little bit more adventurous. I'd like to think over the next 13 years, that's exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> Add finely chopped coriander, the juice of one lemon, olive oil, sesame oil, and soy sauce. Now that is the most difficult part done. Trust All right. Me. Okay. Yeah. And it's quicker to do that than it is make a prawn cocktail. Don't dress the salmon with the marinade yet. Put it in the fridge and start the main course. Okay. Chicken. A simple dish with chicken, creme fraiche and capers. Always go to the outside of the pan first. That's it's really nice and hot. Okay. That's it. So everything will go in here, so there's not any other pan that I need to use? No, we have one pan and one pan okay, only. Yeah. One pan for the husband to wash up <laughs> when he gets home, yeah? When you've got colour on both sides, add some white wine. After two minutes, take out the garlic and rosemary and put some capers in. Chicken stock, creme fraiche in, bring it up to the ball and we leave it. Happy with that? Very Straightforward. Happy. so quick. Quicker than bolognese. Very quick. The beauty of this chicken dish is that you can leave it to finish while you lay the table. When was the last time you made a cheesecake? Time for dessert. A no-baked cheesecake. This is going to wipe the floor with a gatto. <laughs> Start creaming it for me, please. Just squashing it in. Yeah, it's squashing it, in. it. Right. Six tablespoons of sugar. Fresh vanilla pot. Three quarter whipped with cream. You just taste that now with the vanilla in there. Mmm. Lovely. Add the vanilla cream to the cream cheese mix. Next, creme de cassis, a black currant liqueur. I know you girls like a little bit of alcohol, but look. <laughs> so everyone thinks cheesecake has to be long winded, but look. Now, where's that fucking gatto? In the bin. In the bin, it's <laughs> there. Right, look at you, old lamb. Right. <laughs> this menu is so quick, Carol's even had time to get changed before her guests arrive. Oh, bing here. bong, there you go. Right. <laughs> you finish them? Yeah? No. Yeah. And I'll get the ladies in and sit down. It's the prawn cocktail, girls. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Nice to see you. Wine in hand, nice to see you, my darling. Oh, Jesus, pissed already. I, I wish. <laughs> take a seat. Ah, huh? Christ, it's like the calendar girls. Right, take a seat. <laughs> now, there's no prawn cocktail there, is there? No, there's not. Yeah? I don't think they'll be upset, do you? Oh, oh, this is going to be better than normal. Oh, and she's smiling. Much better, look. No prawns. Ladies, good to see you. Sorry about the prawn cocktail, but they're gone. You're going to have to wait another 13 years for another one. <laughs> for the last two months, I've been offering the women of Britain a chance to have their very own slice of the F word. Thousands of passionate female cooks have applied, and now it's time to put my favourites to the test. Good evening, Fannies. Good evening. Right. Which one do you 
fancy. Oh, God. Right. Nina, calm down. Get yourself a glass of wine, my darling, yes? OK, good. Now, listen, the good news is that you lot, yes, were the best of the best out of the thousands of female cooks that applied to be in my kitchen. And three of you are going to show me who really is the best. Right here in my kitchen. Ravinda Bogle. <laughs> Stand up, my darling. I've got some coriander, my absolute favourite herb. Denise Tollyfield. Straight in there now. I'm tempted to drink it myself, but no, we'll put it in the dish. The mass salad. Gemma Hammond. My top tip is to crack the egg and to gently hold it over with some of the whites coming out, just so it cooks first. Now it's time to see what you like under pressure. You've all got 20 minutes. Blow me away with something exciting. Ravinda, what are you going to cook? Tell me. I'm going to do this piece of chicken stuffed with chopped mushrooms, lemon zest, lots of garlic and lots of chopped coriander. Good. Gemma, what are you going to do? I'm going to do Tuscan chicken, which is lemon, thyme, rosemary, basil, chervil. Nice. Good, good, good. Denise, what are you doing, darling? I'm going to do chicken with a bit of a Spanish flavour. Got some peppers, got a shallot, a bit of garlic, some of the paprika. Lovely. All right, that looks nice. So you're roasting it with lemon, herbs, garlic, and you're going to put some fennel in there. I'm going to roast the fennel separately. Okay, how are you going to roast it? I'm just going to roast it with chilli and olive oil. When uh, did you learn to cook? Well, when I was about five years old, my mum said to me, if you don't learn to cook now, you'll never get married, and... Oh, really? And you're married with children? <laughs> right. No, that's no. the irony. I can cook, but no. I haven't found a husband. Don't you film that? Let's okay. not tear. What are you putting right, in there now? Turmeric. I've got in there, but quite a lot of it as it's yeah, turned yeah. out. OK, fine. And, well, I probably didn't want it quite so orange. Hey, ho. Ready to plate up, yes? Ravinda, Gemma, Denise? Yeah, I think Let's so. Let's go, yes? Now, my three families have cooked their amazing dishes and it's time to find out how good it tastes. On my right-hand side here, Angela Hartnett, one of the best female chefs in the country, and Mark Sargent, my right-hand man at Claridge's. Right, uh, Gemma, uh, what have you cooked, please? Well, I made Tuscan chicken and then I did roasted fennel with chilli. Lovely. Do you get that spice yeah. as soon as you eat it? Nice. So slightly overpowering. Oh, it's nice. Delicious, though. I love the fennel because the fennel's like, um, you're it's right about the crunchy. sugars and yeah. the crunchy, but it brought out the sweetness mm -hmm. of it. It's yeah. really nice. Um, yeah. um, for me, slightly hot. I'm told that. Um, an awful yeah. lot. It's a bit too hot. I like the lemon in there. OK, good. Ravinda, uh, tell me about your dish, darling. I did some chicken stuffed with chopped mushrooms, garlic, lemon zest, lemon juice, and balsamic vinegar uh -huh. reduction. Presentation-wise, yeah. Yeah. yeah, very neat. Good, yeah. Thank you. You know as well, you've got that sweetness at the end, haven't you? That's nice. You sort it's of balsamic. Yeah, really lovely. It's but really sweet. Nice. Yeah. The, lemon, the lemon goes love... really well with yeah. that. Yeah, just, yeah. just really together. Mm -hmm. Fresh as well. Great yeah. season now. Well. Delicious. Denise. Tell me what you've done, darling. Right, I've done a sort of Spanish-style chicken. Yes. Saffron rice, tomatoes, garlic, shallots and peppers. Excellent. Sarge, first impressions of that? Mm, really good. Mm. Mm. Rice is nice, got a really nice texture. Mm. I got slightly it. nervous when you put half a tin of turmeric in the rice. But yeah. I was pretty nervous myself when I saw yeah. that rice. Yeah. It's getting a little bit too crispy, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. Burnt. Apart from that, impressive. Uh, what I like about all three dishes is that you worked at it. Mm. Yeah, I said to you, get the idea and evolve it. And I think you just did that. So, I uh, made my decision. The woman that I want to be my fanny is... Ravinda, well done! <laughs> well done, well done, well done. Well done, my darling. How are you feeling? I'm just feeling yes. like I need to be woken up. Dream. You better wake up because you're dessert next week, yes? <laughs> yes? Well done. Oh, my God! OK. Oh. Big round, yes? Let's go. Oh. Next on the menu, he may know how to look good naked, but can got one beat me in the recipe challenge. Ponzi Honest. Winner, loser. And there's a final twist as I take my lambs to the slaughter. Last thing on my mind right now is fucking shepherd's pie. Right, welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out who has won the recipe challenge. Nervous? Shitting myself. Shitting, sir. Look at me, I'm shaking. Really? Look at what you've done to me. So, yeah, Ponzi, honest. Winner, loser. Right, JB, <laughs> come back with the good news, yes? 
And do you know what? Right. If I don't win, I'm not sleeping with you. Just, just consider <laughs> okay. that. So edition number one and edition number two. Okay. Bon appétit. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, quite strong and seafood strong. taste, definitely. It's quite, it's very oh, light it's though. It won't cook very well though. Yeah, no, they are mm. brilliant. The, te the texture's um, quite nice. Mm. Instantly tastes coriander. Yeah, mm. coriander's really strong yeah. now, it's really, really nice. And there's actually the one there's, so, there's a lot of flavour in them. Oh. Bring in the good news. <laughs> yes? Okay. Uh, ah. The winner, and I'm quite happy actually. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah! yeah. Oh, no, come here! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, come back! I hate you! Hey, listen, listen, listen. Well, well, what, did, what, on what grounds? Um, I want to ring it. I had to say, I'm from coffee in the kitchen uh, in Chinese. For a mizzy bit of kitchen. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> now get out of my kitchen. You. Love Thank you, you so too. much. All right. I'll send you a card, yes? Yeah. Commiseration. All well right, done. See you later. Well, it's time to say goodbye to my lambs. It's the final day for my flock. At 17 weeks, my lambs are old enough to go to the slaughter. I've been a sheep farmer for three and a half months and it couldn't have been any more eventful. One of my sheep died at birth and then my lamb Charlotte was mysteriously killed at the Beckhams. Gavin is the only original member of my flock still alive. I like Gavin the most because he's really friendly. He's living in my garden, along with two French lambs, which replaced Charlotte three weeks ago. I called the other two the ugly two, because they are ugly. But on the day of the slaughter, there's a final twist. Gavin's been diagnosed with pneumonia and been prescribed antibiotics. Official regulations state a lamb can't be slaughtered for a month after these kind of injections. So at the last minute, Gavin has escaped slaughter. Hey, buddy, we had the most amazing recipe for shepherd's pie. And you evaded it. Come on. He's Hello. saved. Luckily for me, the two purebred lambs are good for the chop. So we load them up for their final journey. We can't leave Gavin alone in our garden, so he's coming too. Gavin, you are one lucky little boy, mate, I tell you. Huh? Hey. Hey. Oh, dear. Here we go again. Uh, you've never actually been inside a abattoir? No. I think it's one of those situations where I don't quite know how I'm going to find it. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Are you well? I'm well. I'm well. Good to see you. Well, um, get, them yep. the, get them off the trailer for you. OK, great. Up, 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 up. Uh, Mark, it's quite a quick process. Yes, yeah? very quick. I'm not very good when it comes to these kind of situations. Um, it's done instantly. Instantly. Seconds. Throat. And then, up, and then up onto the line. Yeah. Oh. From then, start to finish, then, how long? Uh, well, uh, 20 seconds from stun to stick time. Maximum. OK, let's go. I'm going to put the electric tongs on. Yes. If you, if you hold them steady, OK, they're going to fall over, induce an epileptic fit, chained up, and then put on the elevator and go upstairs. Then you can follow it up right. and watch me stick them outside Absolutely if you want to. In terms of the emotional impact, you know, they've been in the garden, but they're new arrivals. So, oh, yeah. thankfully, I'm not attached. Purposely, I didn't get close to them. Watching yeah. it now, I've been part of it now, yeah. it's crucial for me. Right. But it's awful when you see them just before it's going to happen. Yeah. I'm going to be holding my lambs as they are stunned with tongs that charge to 200 volts. OK, let go. Right, take the shock stuns the lamb so they feel no pain when their throat is cut. It's so professionally done, it's quick. That's the most important. Yeah, I mean, it's over and done within seconds. That's great. Oh. That's just nerves, Danny. Last thing on my mind right now is fucking shepherd's pie. Ready? Next one. Moments later, my second lamb is slaughtered the same way. Very, very odd experience. I mean, very traumatic. I think when you when you just see, you know, one minute you've got this live lamb wriggling around, next minute, that's it. I really wanted to learn all I could about what happens after the lambs are killed. We start by skinning them. It's an incredibly skilled job. The initial cuts are called ripping lines because they're ripping through the skin, and there was just brute force. So you push over both sides, and really just. Pulling the, the sheep out of the wall, really. Yeah. 
Amazing how hot the animal is. Yeah. Hold it there and put some, put that hand on there as well and push towards the wall. Go on, push. Lean on it, lean on it. The rest of the skin is removed by a machine to save time. Unbelievable. I mean, the lamb looks fantastic now, doesn't it, in terms of quality-wise? Yeah. So next stage? Evisceration. Takes it up, over. God. You've got the lungs, the liver there, the heart. God, the liver's amazing now. Look yeah. at the liver. It looks very healthy. Yeah. It does look very healthy, doesn't it? As a kidney, I'm amazed how hot they are. Yeah. It's hard to believe that, you know, literally five minutes ago, these things were rolling around. That's right, yeah. Huh? yeah. All meat slaughtered in the UK is examined by government inspectors. If the carcass passes, it gets a stamp of approval. One final job. I've promised Hugh Furley Whittingstall the brains to cook with. I don't want the brain full of fucking skull. You know, a little shrapnel. Oh, top of the cranial cavity. That's good. Perfect. There you go. There's the brain exposed. That's good. And there you have the brain. They're beautiful, huh? No bits of skull. God. Amazing. You're still fucking warm. Okay. Fucking what a process. Uh, thank you. It's been uh, a pleasure. Honestly, it's been a, a really big eye-opener. I can relate to it now, because that's how we get it. That's how we would arrive at Claridge's, straight from the farm. Now, time to start thinking about burning out the legs, breaking it down, the rack, the neck. Good. A good pair of lambs there. OK, Fine. JB, results for the desserts, yes? Mm -hmm. The amount of ladies that are happy to pay for desserts. Fuck me. 16 out of 50. What? 16? What, what did they say? Um, two alcoholic. Two alcoholic? Yeah. They're girls. What's wrong with that? <laughs> That's the most hilarious thing I've heard all fucking year. You know that. <laughs> so, total, that is 75 out of 150. Sadly, in the end, four ex-army officers were yeah, beaten by a bunch of lasses. <laughs> <laughs> On the menu next week, service comes from my Mayfair restaurant, and Ricky Gervais and I share a drink to celebrate. <laughs> Spunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly squeamish to drink Spunk. Oh! oh. <laughs> now, the trouble that that's very old Spunk. <laughs> Hugh Berle Wittenstall helps me cook up my lamb's brains. This will certainly be the freshest set of brains I've ever worked really? with. Really? And I go head to head with Johnny Vegas in the recipe challenge. You copying me again? Yeah, I just live to follow you. That's I have Gordon nice. Ramsay parties. <laughs> we all just sit around telling each other to fuck off. <laughs>